what we learn here is the principle of superposition of waves and to what really is interference of waves so let us say you create two waves that travel simultaneously along the same string and let y1 and y2 be the displacements that would have happened in the string if each wave had traveled singularly or alone then the y dash displacement of the string when these waves overlap can be found by simply taking the algebraic sum or we can say y dash is equal to y1 plus y2 this therefore implies that overlapping waves can be added algebraically to produce a resultant wave or a net wave and this is what we call the principle of superposition which states rather in a simple way that when several events occur simultaneously the net effect is the sum of individual events and i must say that we're lucky that nature has been kind to give us such simplistic results where we just need to add the two events algebraically and in fact this makes solving numerical problems so much easier so let us examine the sequence of snapshots of two pulses moving in opposite directions on the same straight string and per the principle we have just defined when these pulses overlap the resultant pulse should be their sum and this is what exactly happens so you can also see that overlapping waves do not in any way alter the travel of each other so that brings us to the concept of interference of waves so suppose we generate two sinusoidal waves that have the same wavelength and amplitude we send them in the same direction along a stretched string well we can say that the superposition principle will apply here too but how would the y displacement of the resultant wave look like or what resultant wave can you predict well the nature of resultant wave will depend on the extent to which the waves are in phase or in step with each other in other words how much one waveform is shifted from the other waveform for waves exactly in phase such that the crests and troughs of one wave is aligned with that of the other such as these two they will combine and you will get double the displacement of either wave acting alone well if they exactly out of phase such that the crest of one is aligned with the trough of the other wave like these two they combine to cancel each other and you'll find that the string remains straight so this combining of waves is what physicists call wave interference and the waves are said to interfere you may once again like to know that these terms refer only to the wave displacements the travel of the wave is pretty much unaffected so let us take one wave as y1 xt is equal to a sin kx minus omega t and another wave not in phase with the first one as a sin kx minus omega t plus phi so we'll go ahead and write y2 xt as equal to this well from the equation you can see that both the waves have the same angular frequency omega therefore the same frequency f they also have the same angular wave number k and therefore the same wavelength lambda and the amplitude a is also the same for both the waves further they both travel in the positive direction of the x-axis with the same velocity and speed so the two waves are exactly the same but out of phase with each other by phi radians or we can say they have a phase difference of phi we could also say that one wave is phase shifted from the other by an angle phi radians so it is the same thing being said in different ways now using the principle of superposition the resultant wave should be the algebraic sum of the two interfering waves and the displacement should be therefore y dash xt is equal to y1 xt plus y2 xt so let's go ahead and substitute the actual expression for y1 xt and y2 xt here and well if you do some trigonometry we know that sine alpha plus sine beta is equal to two times sine of half alpha plus beta into cos alpha minus beta and if we use this identity in this equation what you'll get is y dash xt would be equal to 2a cos 
because half phi multiplied by sine of kx minus omega t plus half phi. Well, you can clearly see in this equation that this is your displacement, this is your amplitude, and this, well, you can say is the oscillating term. So this is your resultant wave with this as the displacement, this as the amplitude, and this as the oscillating term. And it's no surprise that this wave is a sinusoidal wave moving in the plus x direction. In fact, this is the only wave you would actually see on the string or put another way, you will not get to see the two interfering waves. So I summarize once again, if two sinusoidal waves having the same amplitude and wavelength travel in the same direction along a straight string, they interfere to create a resultant sinusoidal wave traveling in that direction. And you'll see that if we put phi equal to zero radians here, two waves will be in phase and this equation will become y dash will equal to 2a sine kx minus omega t. And when this happens, you get the greatest amplitude that is the sum of amplitude of two waves. Interference that produces greatest possible amplitude is called fully constructive interference. On the other hand, if let us say phi was equal to pi radians, so let us put over here that here phi is equal to zero radians. So when phi is equal to pi radians, what you'll find is the displacement y dash becomes zero. So the interfering waves at phi equal to pi radians would be described as exactly out of phase and this is how they would look visually. And in such a case, when you put phi is equal to pi radians, which you already done, this expression becomes zero and the amplitude of the resultant wave is also zero. Then for all values of x and t, y x t equals zero or y dash expression equals zero. So the resultant wave is a flat line despite there being two waves on the string and we therefore see no action, no motion and we call such an interference as fully destructive interference, which I guess is uh, so named since it kind of destroys both waves due to a certain phase difference that is pi radians here. Well, we can tabulate phase differences and the interference they create. And you can see that if interference is neither fully constructive nor fully destructive, it can be called intermediate interference the resultant wave will then have an amplitude value between 0 and 2a. So in this table, we can see that a phase difference of 120 degree yields an amplitude of a, which is obviously between 0 and 2a. And at this point, you may like to pause and read this table and absorb its contents a little better. So we can see in this table that the two waves with the same wavelength are in phase if the phase difference is zero or any integer number of wavelengths. So this gives us an interesting trick to get a sense of the nature of resultant waves if the phase difference is not an integer. So let us say you've been given two waves and the phase difference between them is 2.4 wavelengths. Well, you can drop the integer in this case too and treat the two waves as if the phase difference is 0.4 wavelengths only. Then we can say that the resultant wave will have the same appearance or wide displacement as if these two waves were at a phase difference of 0.4 wavelengths only. Well, a phase difference of 0.4 wavelengths is an intermediate interference that is close to fully destructive interference and this is equivalent to one of 2.4 wavelengths. And, and most likely over a period of time, you will have a sense of how two waves would look like if the phase difference between the two is some number of wavelengths between zero and one. And you can use this information to estimate how the resultant wave would look like if the wave difference is a larger integer. So let us try to simulate an experiment that will give us a better understanding of the principle of superposition and interference. So say you have a water tank and a pipe from which water can drip into the tank. So let us open the tap so that the water starts dripping out of it. So we have this device 
and an attached probe that will help us find the level of water in the tank. If we place the probe here, you can see the wave height is reflected here. And if you bring it closer to the source, you'll get larger waves, which is not surprising. Or if you take it away from the source, the height of the water wave becomes smaller as it should be. So this is what we can say is the side view. If we see it from the top, it look like this. So let's start the experiment again with two taps this time and note the water level in the tank before we open the taps. Well, here you can see it is a flat line. So we'll assume this as the reference level and we could say this is the zero mark and it's same across the tank. So let us place the probe back here and now we'll go ahead and open one tap so that the drops that fall in the tank create small waves that move outward. So the probe shows that this is the level of water at this point or you could say this is the amplitude of wave here. If we move a little away from the source of the waves, the level of water reduces the way we saw earlier. Now let us go ahead and open the second tap also so that we have the water drops falling in the tank and creating waves. Well, let us see what is happening here. The wave amplitude has gone down and we are getting a smaller wave. And what exactly is happening is that waves from second tap overlap with the waves from the first tap and the amplitude goes down here. So we can say that there's a certain phase difference between the waves from the two sources that is causing this intermediate interference more towards the destructive side. In other words, the phase difference between the two waves is such that they're adding up to create waves with smaller amplitude. Well, let, let's move the probe to a different point and see what happens. And what we see is that the resultant wave has an amplitude even smaller. And this essentially indicates a higher level of destructive interference. We can say that there'll be some point where the waves from the two sources are totally canceling each other and complete destructive interference happens. Let us move the probe to yet another point. And here, what we see is that the resultant amplitude of the wave is quite high. And this again is happening due to the phase difference between the two waves here is such that the intermediate interference happens. And this is more towards a constructive side. And if we move the probe to this point, what you find is the resultant wave has an even higher amplitude, which indicates high constructive interference. Again, there'll be a point in the tank where complete constructive interference happens. We can also put two probes at different points and see two completely different kind of interferences happening. One is destructive and the other is constructive. 